Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be learning Metallica's For Whom the Bell Tolls. It's an awesome track, probably one of their easier ones to learn because the tempo is pretty slow and the riffs aren't that complicated. So if you're new to Metallica and new to playing metal, this is going to be an awesome one for you to learn. Um, but before we get into it, make sure your tuning is right. For this lesson, I'm just in standard tuning. So if you're in standard, you're fine. You can play along. But if you're going to play along to the album, that is slightly sharp, about a quarter step sharp. So you'll want to tune up about 50 cents. Um, then you'll be able to play along. It's going to sound a little bit off if you're just in standard tuning. Let's get right into it. Uh, the uh, intro, very commonly mistaken for a guitar. Uh, however, this intro was played by a bass. It sounds like this. Okay, so let's break that down. And uh, before we do, we'll just cover the power chords that you hear going on underneath that. And that's just an F sharp power chord to an E. Okay, so F sharp, second fret on the low string, hit that twice, twice more, to an open E power chord. And notice that I'm using all down strokes. If you wanna play it like them, use downs. And that's all that that part is. Okay, and that guitar part, those chords are going to happen 12 times in total. That riff plays 12 times. And the first eight times has this bass melody going over it. Okay, now to play it in the octave that you hear on the album, you'll want to play it here with your pinky starting on the 12th fret of the D string. Okay, so we just go 12, 11, 10, 9. Come down to 10, 9 on the A string. Back up to 12 on the D string. And then do a string skip down to the low E, 10, 9. Okay. And that starts on beat two, one, two and three and four, one and two and three, one, two. Okay, now it on the album, it doesn't strictly stay just that every time. There are little variations in there. So if you're uh, wanting to learn this on the guitar and throw those little variations in there, then a couple of the ones that you're gonna wanna do um, is little trills on the bottom string. Okay, uh, so the fourth time, and you really have to listen to on the album for all these little variations, but they are there. The fourth time through that riff, you're gonna put that, uh, that little trill on the bottom string. It goes like this. Okay, and it's not super fast, like Robert Trujillo a lot of the time in the live shows. He'll put in a little quicker trill there, but on the album, Burton didn't play it really fast. He just played it as 16th notes. It would be like a one e and a two, one, two and three and four, one and two and three and a four, right? That's all that it would be. So you would just go start on the ninth fret and do two hammers to the 10. And that's all that trill is. And then the sixth time, a little more intricate, he goes, Okay, so he starts picking 16th notes for beats two and three here. We, we, instead of just hitting each note once in that chromatic movement, we hit it twice. So twice on the 12th fret of the D string, twice on the 11th, twice on the 10th, and then come down to the 9th fret. And then we're actually gonna play that 9th fret one more time as we come down to the A string. Okay, and then the last rotation too, there's another variation in there. Again, he kind of trills on the bottom, but he's going. Right, so it would be like this. Okay, so you just hit that string twice. Nine, 10, nine, hammer pull. And then again, nine, 10, nine, hammer pull. Right, so those are the variations that you hear the bass doing on the album. So you can copy those if you want to really learn that part exactly. Now, before we move on, I just want to make mention of another part that is in there on the album. Live, they don't perform it like this, but on the album, there is indeed a guitar part in there that's an octave higher than the bass. And uh, I never really knew that until I really started researching this song for the uh, for this video. I always just assumed it was Cl Cliff Burton doing the, the intro by himself. But uh, when I unplugged the left speaker, I could really hear... It made the octave up guitar coming out of the right channel a lot more prominent. So it is there. 
and they must have done this on the album just to make it you know really sound huge and layer up those parts but like i said this isn't done live so um live it's always robert or it was cliff doing it live um but there is an octave up guitar part on there on the album that you can copy and this has no variations in it it just simply plays this melody line over and over okay it just does that uh, the eight times along with the bass and it doesn't do the variations that the bass is throwing in there so we're starting on the 10th fret of the high string 10 9 8 7 come down to the b string 8 7 back up to 10 on the high string and then 7 6 on the g string okay Okay, like you're probably not going to play that part if you're performing this live. You'll probably stick to how Metallica play it, but I throw that in there for the sake of completeness since it is in there on the album. Um, now, that whole thing plays eight times, and then after eight times, the bass, those underlying guitars, keep doing. Right, they keep that pattern going, um, but then the bass changes. To that riff okay so uh i'll show you these notes first uh because the guitars are really when they come in next they just double this riff but doing it with power chords so it's the same bass mo bass line movement so we're just going zero three two one three times on the low string and then zero two three open a uh, at once Okay, that's the first half of the riff. The second half of the riff is the exact same, except play a B on the second fret of the A string rather than the open A. So it'd be like this. Okay, um, and then that repeats again before the guitars come in and then the guitars come in and they sound like this. Okay, now, uh, there on the album, there is a guitar layered in there, an octave higher to add some beef. So I'll show you how to play that an octave higher as well. But when they play it live, both James and Kirk play the part that I just played, this down on the bottom two strings. Okay, so those guitars are following the same root movement that the bass line was playing a second ago that I just showed you. Uh, but we're just doing it in power chords, right? So instead of just doing single notes, we're just doing power chords. So start with an open E and put a nice palm mute on all of this, a nice heavy palm mute. And then we're just gonna to go to the third fret, down to the second, to the first. And we do that three times. Followed by the E power chord, then the second fret, third fret, A power chord stab. Okay, so the first half of that riff, nice and slow. And then the second half, exact same, except we're just gonna stab a B power chord on the second fret of the A string as that final stab. So nice and slow. And then after we play through that riff a couple of times, there's a couple measures of just holding an E power chord. So I'll just quickly play that riff for you nice and slow once through, and then I'll cover the octave, the guitar that's an octave higher on the recording. Okay, so now as I mentioned, there is a second guitar part that is doubling that an octave higher on the album, really beefs the part up, makes it sound huge. Um, even though they don't play it live, since it's on the album, I'll cover that for you, exactly what they were doing. So I'll quickly play it and then we'll break it down. Okay, so as you can see, that guitar part is the same root movement, just an octave higher. So we'll start on the second fret of the D string. 
That's E, just an octave higher. And we're going to slide up to the fifth fret, come back a half step, and another half step. Okay? And we do that three times. And then we go two, four, five, A power chord stab. Okay, that's the first half of the riff. Okay, and that A power chord is the same as the first guitar part. So both guitars are stabbing those same power chords. Uh, this second guitar part isn't going an octave higher for those stabs. And then the second half of the riff is the exact same. We're just going to stab the, the B power chord for that final power chord, right? And then that's it. So nice and slow, the whole riff for you is this. And then both guitars play a ringing E power chord for two measures. And then we get into the next riff, which goes like this. Okay, so this riff is actually the verse riff. So once we've learned this, we've learned the verse. Um, and then we just have to talk about Kirk's repeating melody that goes over that. So chords are really simple. We're just ringing an E power chord for two measures. Come up to a G on the third fret. Right, we do that. We let it ring for one whole measure. And then on the second measure, we go down up. Right, um, most tabs only have that as one shot because on the album it is really hard to hear, but there's a lot of really awesome isolated guitar tracks out there that you can hear. And if you watch enough live footage, you can see James doing a down up on that G quite often as well. Um, and then after that G, we go back to E for two measures. Come up to the G for one measure again. And then we go to a C and an A for two beats each. C on the third fret of the A string and then open A power chord. And then the whole thing repeats again until we get into our next riff. Okay, so one time through that riff, super nice and slow for you, here it goes. And now we just have to talk about Kirk Hammett's lead line over top of that chord progression. And it's two beats of triplets, so six notes. That's all we have to learn. And then it just repeats the whole way through. So it sounds like this. Just six notes. One triplet, two triplet. Okay, and before we break that down exactly what those notes are, just want to make mention of the picking. If you want to play it exactly like him, he does down pick all of these notes. I see most people alternate picking through this part, um, which is fine if you haven't built up the stamina in your pick hand to do consecutive down strokes through all of that because it goes for quite a long time, right? You can choose to alternate pick for now until you can build up that stamina um, and it will sound great. But if you want to play it just like Kirk does, then it's down strokes all the way. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go start on the 12th fret of G and play that with your second finger. So 12th fret of G, down to 14 on D, back up to 11 on G. So that's our first triplet. Okay, and then we come down to the D string, 12, 14, back up to 11 for G for the second triplet. Okay, that's our six notes. And on the album, you just wanna put a palm mute on it and just keep that palm mute going the whole way through. And now that you know those six notes, you just play it. Over and over and over and over, all the way through that part. Now on the album, I'll just make a quick mention of this, because um, if you're playing it live, you might want to throw in what he does live too and make it a little more authentic. But on the album, that just plays those six notes all the way through uh, what would total of uh, 16 measures because it's an eight measure progression that repeats, right? So we have a total of 16. And on the album, that six notes just plays the whole way through, kind of fades out at the very end. But live, what he does is he, he does this 
di well, it's out of the Dorian scale. We won't get too technical, but it's a falling thirds sequence pattern down the Dorian scale, the E Dorian scale. And actually that is going to come into play later in the song in the bridge. We're also, he also uses that for their harmonized lead line. But when he plays it live, he substitutes that in for the last final measure. So if you're playing this live for the 16th and final measure, you'll want to play. Okay. So what we're doing is 12 on G 14 on D. 11 on G, 12 on D. And then come down to the D string, 14, 11. Right, so that's our first two beats. One triplet, two triplet. Now for our last two beats, it's the same thing, just down on the next string set, really. Uh, so we're going 12 on D, 14 on A, 11 on D, 12 on A, and then come down to the A string, 14, 10. And that's three triplet, four triplet. So put that all together. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Sounds like this. Okay, now to put that into context, if you were playing this live and wanted to throw that in, you'd be trucking along, chugging away on that repeating group of six, right? The final measure comes along. and get into the next riff like that. So let's talk about that next riff. I'll give it a quick play and we'll break it right down. Okay, so we got some more triplets in this riff. We chug the first beat is a triplet on that low palm muting that low E string. And then stab a G power chord on beat two, third fret of the low string. Another triplet on beat three. Uh, a power chord on beat four. So we have for our first measure. Okay, now we chug another triplet. Now on measure two, we start with that three chugs on the low E string, then G again to a B flat, first fret of the A string, and then F sharp, second fret of the low string. Okay, so our first half of the riff. Okay, second half of the riff is the same. Except for the very end, okay? So we've got our e three E chugs, G, three E chugs, A, three E chugs. Now we go to this G, but we only, we just stab it really quick and put another two E chugs in there before we hit our B flat again. Back to our F sharp on the second fret and fall down to the first fret on that low string. Okay. And then of course we can repeat that. So now that we've broken the whole riff down, here it is nice and slow. Okay, so that's how Hetfield plays it, and Hammett plays it the exact same, except instead of stabbing an open A power chord, we're gonna relocate that A power chord to the fifth fret. When I watch live footage, it seems to be that that's how they prefer playing it. Ha uh, Hetfield plays the open A, and Hammett plays that A on the fifth fret of the low string. So, uh, Hammett's way would be the exact same, except moving that A up there. Okay, so you can take your pick uh, whichever way you want to play it. And then that takes care of the whole intro of the song. And we've already learned the riffs that we need to learn. We've got the uh, the verse comes in and that's we've already learned that. Um, that was that uh, riff that we learned underneath. Right, that eight measure chord progression that we learned. And then the chorus is just this. that riff again.
Okay, now this next section that we have to learn is the harmonized lead section. And we're gonna learn two different ways. We'll learn the album version first and then the live version because it is slightly different uh, how they play it live versus how it was recorded. And um, it's a 12 measure section. Uh, is really just six measures that repeat. So we have a six measure chord progression to learn and it's really, really quite simple. Uh, I'll just play through it quick. Okay, then like I said, that repeats for another six measures for the total of 12. But all that we're doing is holding an E power chord for three measures. And then move up to a G power chord on the third fret. Okay, and those are triplets. One, two triplet, three, four triplet. Back to an E power chord for one measure. And then do a B power chord, second fret of the A string. And that's our six measures. Okay, now, uh, album version. We have the first line that comes in and it goes like this. Okay, and if you've been paying attention to the whole video, we've already covered this. But for those of you that might have just skipped this section because you were curious about learning it, we'll go over it again. So, um, th these are triplets just falling in diatonic thirds down the E Dorian scale. We, and we'll split it up into two beats. So our first two beats, Okay, one triplet, two triplet. So we start on the 12th fret of G, use your second finger, makes everything easy, staying in position. 14th fret on D, and then 11 on G, 12 on D. Okay, and then come down to the D string, 14, 11. So we have. Okay, now those are our first two beats. Well, the second two beats are, we're basically doing the same pattern. Three triplet, four triplet, okay? We go 12 on the D string, 14 on A, 11 on D, 12 on A, and then 14 and 10 on A. Put that all together. Notice how I'm using all down strokes. Uh, both James and Kirk use all down strokes for their parts in this. Um, you could use alternate picking if you're not used to just doing rapid down strokes, but if you want to play it like them, it is all down strokes. Okay, now, on the album, the uh, second measure, we're hitting an E power chord on the seventh fret of the A string, and you can let that E string ring underneath it, okay? And it's kind of tough to pick out, but if you listen really close, you can hear that B note on the ninth fret of the D string ringing out, so that gives it away that that power chord was being hit there. Okay, now on measure three, we repeat this diatonic third line. And on measure four, just hit a G power chord on that 10th fret um, while the underlying rhythm part is going. Okay, um, then measure five again. And then the last measure, come down and hit that same B power chord that the rhythm guitar is hitting. So that, uh, th that repeats again exactly the same for the second set of six, two for the full 12 measures. Um, so I'll just play through that really slow for you. Okay, then I like, like I said, that repeats exactly the same for the second half of the bridge. And then uh, on the album, for the last six measures, the second half, we have another guitar. Um, Hetfield comes in with a harmony to that line. And that harmony goes like this. Okay, so um, this guitar isn't hopping back and forth between lead and chords, the same as that first guitar part. Um, so we'll split this up into two beats um, at a time here again. Our first two beats goes like this. Okay, so we're starting on the A string, 14, 12. Come up to the 11th on D, back to 12 on A, and 11 on D, and then up to nine on G, right? 
And we've got that one triplet, two triplet. Okay, now our next two beats. Okay, we're gonna start on 12 on G, back to nine, 10 on B, 11 and 12 on G, and then hit the 12th fret on B twice. And that's three triplet, four triplet, one. Okay, so we're ending right on the downbeat of one. A whole measure of triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. Okay, now the next phrase is the exact same, except instead of hitting the B twice, we're gonna, our final note is gonna be the 12th fret on the G string. Okay, and that, they change that note so that, because that's our measure where we've got the, that G power chord. So obviously hitting the root of that chord resolves that nice, sounds good. Um, and then we just go back to our final phrase, the exact same thing that we played the first time where we hit the 12th fret on B twice. Okay, so now that we've covered that, I'll just play that part again nice and slow. Okay, so that is the harmonized lead section, how it appears on the album. Now live, they change it a little bit, um, mostly due to not being able to play all the guitar parts the way it is on the album, right? They can't obviously can't be playing the chords and all the lead at the same time. So they just take the two guitar parts and put them together. So they'll do a measure of lead followed by a measure of chord and go back and forth, a measure of lead, measure of chord, back and forth. Um, so what we're doing, Hammett just plays this same thing. That he that we've been doing the whole time, right? But except in do, instead of doing these higher chords the way it was on the album, we're copying those lower chords. So we do go down to the low E power chord for measure two. Come back up for measure three, and come down for that G power chord on measure four. Back up for measure five. And then hit the B power chord there on measure six. And then uh, live, Hammett just repeats that part verbatim for the second half. And then uh, Hetfield's part is the one that significantly changes live the way it was on the album. And I'll just give that a quick play so that you can hear how that goes. <laughs> Okay, so live, he starts off the same with, those first two beats are the same. Uh, 14, 12 on A, up to 11 on D, back to 12 on A, 11 on D, nine on G, okay? And then from there, it branches off, gets a little bit different. He hits 12 on G and pulls off to the ninth fret. Comes back down to the 11th fret on D, nine on G, and then comes up to the 12th fret on B, and hits that three times. And then continues to hit that 12th fret right square on the beat um, throughout the second measure. All right, and you can get, give it some vibrato when you're doing that too. Okay, the second time through that phrase, he bars the G and the B, and sometimes I see him picking the, the two notes apart, but he'll bar the G and the B at the end and just give them some vibrato and place uh, eighth note triplets through there, or sorry, quarter note triplets through there. Um, so that second phrase. Right, exact same thing, we start off the same. Pull off between that 12 and the nine. And then from there, just bar that G and the B at the end. Um, and then the next phrase, again the same.
uh, except we have two little bends at the end there. Okay, so once we hit that 12th fret, bend and release a whole step, and then slide up to the 14th fret. So you slide up a whole step, and we're going to bend it one and a half steps to get an E to resolve the whole line. So that final phrase would be like this. So last section, guys, we have to talk about the outro. And again, the chords are really easy. Um, nothing complicated going on, but there is some guitars layered up here that you have to know about if you want to understand everything that was happening, how they created that sound. So uh, we'll call it guitar one is down here in open position. Okay, and it's just doing that over and over. So it's just an E power chord, followed by F sharp on the second fret, back to E, F sharp, coming up one half step to G. Okay, and we're just playing that over and over and over all the way till fade out. Okay, now there's another rhythm guitar layered up there and we're doing those same chords just up, starting with our E power chord on the seventh fret. Okay, so that's the seventh fret power chord on a, the A string, and you can let that open E ring underneath it. Coming up to the ninth fret, F sharp, back to that E, F sharp, one more half step up to the tenth fret, D or G. Okay. And if you watch live footage uh, years ago, like the earlier footage, Hetfield was playing this outro part with these higher power chords, but in more recent years, he's reverted to playing the lower, heavier sounding ones. Um, and then th there's even one more guitar part layered in there where we've got these uh, unison bends. So this is uh, 14th fret of B, 16th fret of G. And that plays every time the F sharp hits, then you hit that, um, going up one half step to the 15th fret of B and the 17th fret of G. Play that every time the G power chord plays, right? So you're just going to have to bend, do these bends, and just kind of experiment until you can get those into pitch. Uh, so that it's a unison bend, right? So that part, the... Right? That's how that would sound. Um, but I was just putting that open low E in there for effect, just so that you could hear where those bends take place. But that's not actually there in the album. That was just for emphasis on how that would, exactly where to play those. So layer up those three guitar parts and it will sound like the album. And now we have to talk about Kirk's little whammy bar solo that he does at the end. Now I'm going to play what my interpretation of it. There's virtually no way to get this 100%. I definitely don't claim that I've got this 100% the way it was on the album. I doubt that even Kirk Hammond himself would remember every single thing that went into creating the, all the noises. Um, and it might not even all be one take. It sounds like it could be two or three different takes kind of fading in and layering up a little bit as well. So this is my interpretation of what he was doing. And I believe that I get pretty close to a lot of the noises that are being made. Um, at any rate, if you're wondering how you can recreate those noises, this will really help you. And once you have a handle on what I'm showing you, then you'll be free to recreate and, uh, you know, just create your own noises and have some fun with it. Uh, live, he never plays the same thing twice he's always improvising and doing new things all the time so like i said this is my interpretation of the way it is on the album i'll give you a quick playthrough for you and then we'll break down maybe all of it maybe maybe just the significant bits but uh here we go i'll give it a quick play
Okay, so there's, like I said, one possible interpretation of what Kirk was doing at the end. Um, to my ear, it sounds like a lot is happening along the G string, up and down the G string. So let's go through these ideas. And remember, too, that the guitars are tuned slightly high. So if you're trying to play along, these harmonics and stuff are going to sound flat. It's not going to sound quite right. But if you were tuned up a little bit, then this is exactly, it'll sound just right. Um, the first harmonic that I hit is pretty much the third fret wire but on my guitar i find it just a little bit ahead of that fret wire right and then shake the bar uh quite aggressively and then that next note is the third fret of the d string and you can dive the bar um now he comes out of this uh and to, to my ear, it sounds like he's trilling on the D string. Hard to say exactly what fret he's trilling on, but it sounds like he's using the bar, going up and down with it, and trilling. I'm using the fifth fret, so I'm just sn repeatedly snapping from the fifth fret to open. While I use the bar. And then, after I do that for about four beats, I go up to the G string and do the same thing on the G string, that fifth fret. And then, uh, again, I'm just using the bar, and then I start going up the G string chromatically. Because on the album, it really sounds like he hits that 12th fret. And there's the, a bar dive right before he hits another harmonic. And that harmonic is on the 4th fret that I'm hitting. Okay, so, so far all of these ideas, I'll kind of play them slow for you. Um, it's not going to quite have the same effect, but I'll play it slow just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better here. Okay, and now there also does seem to be another open string before we uh, come up to the 12th fret on the G string and I'm using my third finger for that um, because it seems like we're hammering into that 12th fret so I'm using my bar to dive every 12th fret like I'll hit it and then hit it again and then the the third and fourth times so, seems like he's maybe bending the string up a little bit, trying to go a little higher with it every time. And then he slides up to the 14th fret, bends that, and we just aggressively dive the bar while we're shaking it down, right? And then... I'm hitting the 7th fret harmonics on the G and the B string there. Dive the bar. Okay, so nice and slow from the 4th fret harmonic. Okay, now, from here, I'm hearing along the G string again, uh, a rapid pull-offs between five, four, and open. So it's just kind of... Just doing those three notes repeatedly and then start shaking the bar. And then I hear him coming out of that with a little chromatic ascension again, coming up to open string pull-offs. So it's like... To finish that off, I'm hitting the second fret and then pulling off to the open string again. So that little phrase. Okay. And then out of that, we're coming into the seventh fret of the G string. Just kind of trill a little bit between seven and six, but then I think that he's starting to bounce back and forth again between that open string. And then we're hitting that 12th fret on G again and hold that for a measure. Snap off to open and back on. And then 
gets a little harder to hear because we're quite into the well into the fade out here but there's a little a little climbing melody so what i think he's doing as close as i can tell hit the 13th fret on the b string and bend it up a whole step but there's a little bit of bar work to make that sound just right you want to dip the bar when you hit it and then we're going to bend it up a whole step okay and then move up to the 15th fret and we just dip and bend at the same time on that 17th fret dip first and then bend and then we're going to move up to the 20th fret and we're going to bend that one and a half steps and then come up to the 22nd fret of the high string and bend that and that's as it fades out at that point so it goes like this and that's the last that i can hear before it fades out um so that there is the solo the way that i've interpreted it hopefully some of those ideas help you out um you know once you've got those ideas like you're free free to experiment and come up with your own ideas there is one little lick though that he kirk consistently plays live and i don't know exactly when it crept into the live show but every time i see him play this solo he really relies heavily on this one lick so i'll show you what that is because it's not on the album but he does play it live now so it goes like this Okay, it's really just two notes repeatedly going back and forth that he likes to throw in there. And if you watch any live footage, I'm sure you'll hear that right away in that outro solo. So what he's doing is bending the 15th fret on the B string. And he's kind of dipping the bar with that too. And then he hits the 12th fret on G. And dives the bar. Okay, so that's how he's creating that effect. And that's really only the only lick that I see him consistently playing every time. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention since I think it is pretty cool. It's got it in, in some nice melodic content, a, a nice intervallic content there for you to throw in. Um, but there it is, guys. You now know how to play every single note of For Whom the Bell Tolls. For the most part, it's fairly easy, but it does have some challenging bits in there, like down picking all those triplets and then, you know, coming up with some crazy stuff to do with the whammy bar for the outro solo. Really cool rock riffs, though. Great place to start if you're new to Metallica. Remember to like and subscribe so that you see every Metallica track. I'm doing their whole catalog as note for note as possible. So I'll see you next time.